The installation of underground storage tanks is a specialized craft. Modern assumes that persons using our installation instructions have a fundamental understanding of the essential procedures of pipe fitting, earthwork, and related construction techniques. What makes up a glass steel II storage tank? As a listed product with Underwriters Laboratories for Flammable and Combustible Liquids per UL 58 and UL 1746 standards, the glass steel II has a steel primary containment compatible with all ethanol and biodiesel blends. A monitorable interstitial space with 360 degree secondary containment created by a fiberglass jacket for superior corrosion protection. In addition to Modern Welding's installation instructions, the Petroleum Equipment Institute provides supplemental resources for tank installations. Tank Handling Knowing the weight of a tank is critical when it comes to safe handling. This can vary depending on the tank configuration. While a heavy tank can have the advantage of being more structurally sound and resistant to rolling, you also must consider that you may have to use a crane rather than an excavator in certain circumstances. Always take into consideration the different weight classes of tanks. A multi-compartment tank will weigh more than a single compartment tank. Steel tanks weigh more than fiberglass constructed tanks. A 10,000 gallon glass steel II tank weighs approximately 10,000 pounds. A 10,000 gallon FRP tank weighs between 5,900 and 7,500 pounds. Be sure to consider crane setup location and reach over into excavation for tank placement and never drag or drop a storage tank. Though tanks may look the same, their weights are very different. Be sure to check the bill of lading for estimated weight or call the tank manufacturer. Do not drop or roll a tank. When moving a tank, lift and lower it by the lifting lugs provided on the tank. The cable or chains should be of adequate length so that the maximum angle of lift is 60 degrees. Under no circumstances should chains or straps be used to wrap around the tank shell for lifting. Tank Storage When temporary storage of a glass steel II tank is necessary, identify a secure area. Select a storage area free from rock and foreign objects that may cause damage to the tank exterior secondary containment. Store the tank on backfill bedding in a way that protects the secondary containment from damage. Inspection of tank at time of delivery. Be sure to inspect the tank at the time of delivery. Visually inspect the tank exterior for damage. Any gouging or abrasion should be carefully reviewed and appropriate action taken. Repair if needed with supplied touch-up kit. Remove thread protectors and shipping plugs from all openings except the vacuum gauge fitting assembly. Using compatible, non-hardening pipe sealant, install permanent metal plugs in all unused openings. Make sure to refer to Modern Welding Company's finishing instructions for the proper installation of permanent coverings for unused openings and lifting lugs. For glass steel II tanks fabricated without dielectric isolation, threaded nylon bushings, or flange isolation kits, the tank must use either non-metallic piping or conductive piping must be isolated from the backfill material and any other metal or grounding device. Tank Testing Installers and owners shall note and document the tank's interstitial vacuum at the time of delivery to satisfy tank tightness requirements. Installers and owners should leave the vacuum and vacuum gauge assembly on the tank to monitor for possible damage during the installation process. 
If the interstitial vacuum level changes, investigate and contact the tank manufacturer. Glass Steel 2 tanks are shipped with a vacuum gauge assembly, which shows the amount of vacuum within the tank's annular space. Tightness testing shall be as follows. The tank's initial vacuum must be a minimum of 12 inches of mercury. Use the higher vacuum reading on tank at time of delivery and be sure not to reduce vacuum. A test period of one hour shall be used. If the initial vacuum reading remains the same or drops less than one inch of mercury during the test period, the tank is considered tight. Make sure to keep a record of documented results. If the vacuum reading drops one to two inches of mercury or more, then additional testing shall be required. One, the tank's initial vacuum shall be re-established this process may take several attempts until the vacuum stabilizes. 2. Restart the one-hour test time. 3. At the end of the one-hour test duration, a vacuum loss of less than one inch of mercury reading must be maintained. The interstitial precision tightness test gauge assembly is not for long-term monitoring of the tank's interstitial annular space. This gauge assembly should be removed when the backfill and associated piping is complete. This will confirm that no damage has occurred to the tank's secondary containment during installation. Interstitial Monitor Pipe Installation The annular space monitor opening should be accessible at grade. This opening must be closed to the atmosphere and protected from external loads and movement. The connection at the tank surface must be tight to ensure that groundwater does not enter the tank. Furthermore, too much thread length may cause riser pipe to bottom out against tank surface. It is recommended that monitor pipe grade access be locked and secured from tampering. This will prevent accidental introduction of water or product into the tank's annular space. Excavation and Bedding Excavation is terraced according to soil type. OSHA recognizes three soil types, A, B, and C. The excavation shall be properly prepared and free from any material or objects that would cause damage to the tank exterior. Glass Steel II underground storage tanks are designed to withstand a maximum burial depth of 60 inches. If a greater burial depth is required, please contact the manufacturer. Care must be exercised to avoid undermining nearby structures during construction or afterward, permitting transfer of foundation loads onto the tank. The 45-degree factor illustrated will accomplish this in most cases. Unstable soils use filter fabric to prevent migration and loss of backfill support. When tank installations are subjected to the following conditions, filter fabric is required to prevent backfill migration. 1. Excavation area is subjected to frequent groundwater level changes. 2. Excavation is in a tidal area. 3. Excavation is in a swampy area where bog, muck, peat, or where other soft, expansive clay types and unstable soils are present. 4. Soils that have less than 750 pounds per square foot cohesion and an ultimate bearing capacity of 3,500 pounds per square foot are considered unstable excavations. When filter fabric is used, clean sand is not an acceptable backfill material. Only crushed rock or pea gravel may be used. The minimum bedding depth for backfill under tank in these conditions shall be 18 inches. 
always consult a soil engineer for proper design of excavation, tank support, and restraint of buoyant forces when installation is located in these unstable soil areas and where a high water table is expected. The bottom of the excavation shall be suitably graded and leveled. The foundation for the tank shall be a minimum of six inches of clean, inert, compacted sand, pea gravel, or gravel crushings. There shall be a minimum of 12 inches from the outside edge of the tank to the inside edge of the excavation. This distance shall remain true for the entire perimeter surrounding the tank. Multiple tank installations will also require a minimum of 12 inches between tanks measured from each outside edge. The tank shall be encompassed by the proper backfill and extending to a minimum of 12 inches over the top of the tank. Flowable fill can be used as an alternative to sand, pea gravel, and stone crushings. Flowable fill must meet the National Ready Mixed Concrete Association for Controlled Low Strength Materials CLSM, with strength ranging from 70 to 150 pounds per square inch and shall be installed in accordance with good engineering practice. Backfilling around the storage tank. Take special care to ensure that the backfill is properly installed to evenly support the bottom quadrant of the tank. Be advised that care must be taken not to damage FRP secondary containment of tank with steel shovel blade or other tools used to position backfill under bottom tank quadrant. The placement and compacting of backfill or clip dropping backfill material directly on the tank surface can cause vacuum loss and holiday formation. Subjecting the tank's surface to these conditions when backfilling may damage the tank and void the warranty. Do not backfill in layers using different backfill materials. Smaller sand particles will slip between the larger pea gravel aggregate accumulating at the bottom of the excavation, potentially leaving voids in the upper sections of the backfill. When ballasting a compartment tank, fill and remove the ballast from each compartment uniformly. Once installation is complete and prior to introducing product, the tank must be flushed clean. If product is used as ballast, proper precautions must be taken to prevent fires, spills, leaks, and other associated accidents. Monitor product level frequently to ensure there has been no loss of product. Some regulatory agencies prohibit ballasting with product. Check local regulations before ballasting with product. If the tank must be water ballasted during the backfill procedure, use only potable water. Ballast water should not remain in the tank for longer than 60 days. Be sure that all water is removed from the tank prior to the introduction of fuel product. Water residue will result in dirty fuel being dispensed. Backfilling and vehicular traffic exposure. Areas subject to heavy vehicular traffic shall have a protective cover of at least 18 inches of clean, compacted backfill with 8 inches of reinforced concrete. Areas not subject to heavy vehicular traffic shall have a protective cover of a minimum 18 inches of clean, compacted backfill covered by 4 inches of reinforced concrete or 6 inches of asphalt paving. If compacted backfill is the only cover, it should be a minimum of 24 inches deep. Be sure sufficient anchorage is in place in order to withstand any buoyancy forces exerted by tank. Anchoring and Buoyant Forces A 10,000-gallon underground tank has the capability to generate 80,000 pounds of upward lift. A 20,000-gallon tank has twice that amount, 160,000 pounds. Be sure sufficient anchorage is in place to withstand any buoyancy forces exerted by tank. 
Certain situations require the use of properly designed anchor straps to overcome existing buoyant forces. These straps are used in conjunction with a concrete hold-down slab or dead man anchors. All straps must be installed without twists or knots. A pad of inert, isolation dielectric material must be used to separate the steel anchor strap from the tank. Isolation pads are not required for hold-down strap materials of approved fiberglass or polyester webbing. Do not over-tighten hold-down straps beyond snug to tank surface, and do not re-tighten straps after ballasting. Hold-down strap material made of steel cable or round bar is prohibited. Finishing Instructions A fiberglass finishing kit is shipped with the tank to cover any unused openings and external attachments, such as riser pipes and lifting lugs. All finishing work should be done and allowed to cure prior to backfilling. Customer Warranty Activation Process For the Glass Steel II warranty to be initiated, the installation checklist must be properly filled out by the customer and returned to the Modern Welding Company subsidiary that manufactured the tank. The installation checklist must be returned within 30 days after date of installation. If the Glass Steel II tank has not been installed within 90 days of delivery from the manufacturer, it is required that the tank be recertified by the manufacturer at the owner's expense prior to installation. Storage Tank Maintenance Maintenance of Underground Storage Tanks both the Environmental Protection Agency EPA, and the American Petroleum Institute API, recommend that periodic maintenance should be performed on all underground fuel storage tanks. The Petroleum Equipment Institute PEI, and the Steel Tank Institute STI, require prompt removal of water bottoms regardless of materials used for tank construction. The tank owner is solely responsible for the proper operation and maintenance of the storage tank system. The primary tank should be inspected for the presence of water bottoms and sludge buildup on a regular basis. Lack of such maintenance and inspection control measures by the owner and operator may invalidate the Modern Welding Company limited warranty. Thank you for choosing Modern Welding Company for all of your fuel storage needs. And please, do not hesitate to reach out to one of our sales managers with any questions regarding the installation of your Glass Steel II underground fuel storage tank.